Hi everyone, Dr. Vicki here speaking to you from the Seeds of Transformation Healing Center in Wareham, Massachusetts. It's time for Tarascopes. We're going to be doing the Tarascopes for the sign of Pisces for the month of August 2023. That's Pisces Sun, Pisces Moon, and Pisces Rising. Um, so we're going to do, uh, we're going to be using the uh, Spirit Spirit Animal Oracle this month uh, for all the signs, and we'll be using the Tower of Transformation for the water signs. Um, and each sign I have put a little altar behind me. And uh, so I wanna show you what I have here. I have my painting for Pisces um, that I did back in 22. And I have a couple of uh, oceany things here. Um, that uh, these actually usually are in my bathroom. It's kind of an ocean theme. Uh, but I just want to show you this little girl here. This is my little um, mermaid that I've had um, since I was very young, the 60s. I got this in the 60s. My cousin went to uh, Florida on vacation and brought this back for me. And she has been on my dresser uh, all through my childhood and um, in my bathroom now since I've been here uh, for 18 years. So uh, she's one of my most precious possessions. <laughs> and back then I didn't know I had a Pisces moon. So it resonated, but I didn't know why. It was one of the few things in my bedroom growing up that wasn't a saint or like Mary or Jesus or St. Lucy. I mean, my first boyfriend, when he walked into my my bedroom, he said, oh my God, he goes, this is like a church. Um, yeah, and, uh, you know, back in the, um, yeah, he, he kind of said it was like fooling around in a church, but anyway, let's not go there. That was many, many years ago. So let's take a look at the astrology first. Um, it's an interesting month. It's not as fraught in ways as um, as other months have been. There's been a lot of very big shifts happening. And uh, while those are still happening and there's still pressure for that to happen, it's a month that's gonna feel like things are finally moving in, in some sort of direction and that things are happening after uh, a lot of time hoping and wishing and wondering and, and the like. So that's just the general energy for all of us in, in August. And August starts with a full moon and ends with a full moon. The full moon it starts with is a full moon in Aquarius. And the full moon that it ends with is a full moon in, in your sign, Pisces. And so uh, we're dealing with the more collective side of things with these full moons. Um, both Pisces and Aquarius are collective signs. In the middle of the month, we have a new moon in Leo. That moon is very uh, powerful. It is uh, it is square Uranus, and we also have Mars trining Uranus on that day. So the opportunity for something absolutely positively new and different can come up with that new moon. Um, in the sign of Leo, which is about creative self-expression. We also have Venus in Leo for a month, but it's retrograde. So we're having to reevaluate and reestablish what is important to us at the core of our being. What's in the, at the core of our heart? What is the most important thing in the core of our heart? Self-love is a good place to start with that. Okay. Let's talk about the weeks. Um, we start the week with the full moon for you. Uh, we're activating through the full moon, uh, sun and moon, we're activating your 12th and 6th house. 12th house is the natural house for Pisces. Um, so it's not an unusual uh, energy for you. Not every sign uh, is as comfortable with the 12th house as Pisces can be. But it is activating your, your axis of health and healing. And so it's important that you uh, um, apply yourself to that what needs to be physically healed, what needs to be spiritually healed, you'll find out, you, you'll have the, uh, you'll have the information you need to take the actions that you need to take. Uh, on the same, on the same day, actually, the first week of, of um, 
of August, everything happens on the first day. And then we have the rest of the week to sort of figure out what just happened. So we also have uh, Mars make a trine to Jupiter. This for you is in your seventh and your 11th house the trines. The trines are happening in your uh, air houses and the trines themselves are earthly. And so they're manifesting your ideas. So you have to be real careful about what you're putting out there as far as your mind is, is concerned. We also have Mercury make an opposition to Saturn. Mercury is information. It's our logical mind and Saturn is um, limitation. So we can understand what the limitations of our logical mind is. Of course, we always still have our intuitive mind to work with. So it's not, it just shows you where there's a limitation. And for you, Pisces, we're looking at your seventh and your first house. So this can be um, how much you give away in your relationships, how much you give in your relationships. Is it too much? Generally, it's too much unless you're the type of Pisces that just, uh, you know, some Pisces will be, come up with, the, like something will come up for you and you just sort of like skittle away, like the escapist, the escape artist that you can be, uh, or you take on another persona because that's easy enough for you. Uh, but you really have to face yourself through this process. Week two, we have a, we have a, a square between the sun and Jupiter. Sun and Jupiter are the two largest things in the solar system. They make up like 99% of the mass of the solar system. And so when those two planets square and potentiate each other, we can be a little overconfident. So you need to be aware of your overconfidence. It's going to, it's stressing you out um, in your third house and your sixth house of health. So don't overpromise uh, what you can do. Uh, there is a limitation to how much uh, information uh, you can take in. So be careful of that. Make sure you're not hurting yourself with that. You also have Mercury make a trine to Jupiter on that day. And that's actually a lovely energy because both Mercury and Jupiter are the two planets associated with the mind. It's happening, um, the, the trine is happening in your seventh house. Your Mercury is in the seventh house and Jupiter is in the 11th house. There's, there's a flow of energy. And uh, it's a good time to talk to uh, people of like minds, 11th house, your friends, and also your associates, 7th house. Uh, it's, it's a really good time to, in a way, get together with others and, and discuss things, what, what you want to accomplish together. Week three is that crazy week with the, with the new moon. We have... Um, the sun make a conjunction to Venus retrograde. This is the highlight of the Venus retrograde cycle. Venus is in Leo. Leo is your sixth house. And so this is a real sort of heart to heart with what, what is your service to humanity? Uh, or it could be a heart to heart with, um, are you martyring yourself for something that uh, you should be doing something else with? Or it could simply be a health issue that comes up that you need to look at. Um, and of course, Leo rules the heart. So if there's any weird things happening with the heart, whether you're getting flutters or pain or, or anything like that, you definitely want to get that checked out. And that's true actually for all of us on Venus retrograde in Leo. And uh, uh, Venus is, because it's in Leo and it's square to Taurus and Uranus is in Taurus, there is a lot of stress actually on the heart right now. So we need to be careful of that. And that's true for everybody, not just for Pisces. Um, we also have uh, on that week, a square of Uranus to the sun. And then we have um, the new moon which is square Uranus. So, um, and we also have Mars trying Uranus on that day of the, of the new moon. So there's a lot of Uranian energy uh, with that new moon and um, Mars at that time is in Virgo. Mars is in Virgo all, well, almost all month. Um, so there's a need to take care of what needs to be taken care of. Mars and Virgo needs to take care of whatever task is in front of them.
uh, take care of it and finish it, that kind of idea. So watch your, so watch your health, watch your heart. Um, don't, don't be anybody's um, doorman, you know, speak up for yourself. All right. Um, and the new moon for you is in your 11th house. So the new moon um, in Leo, is it your 11th house? Hold on a second. New moon in Leo. The Pisces for new moon. Uh, sorry, it's in your sixth house. So this is a good time to, um, yeah, new moon. This is a good time to start a new health regime. So get yourself checked and then do what you need to do um, to take care of your heart, honestly. And, and, and it doesn't have to be a physical ailment either. It can be an emotional ailment. Um, physical ailments are the last straw. Um, it starts in at the higher levels. It starts in the mind and then it, it, it moves into the emotions and then it uh, moves into the physical body. So you can be at any level. So the healing can happen on any level. It can be a physical healing. It can be an emotional healing. It can be a spirit, it can be a mental healing or it can be a spiritual healing. All right, uh, week four, after that spectacular third week, week four is a, a week of adjustments. <laughs> Go to the chiropractor. Uh, the sun in Leo is, we have two uh, in conjuncts to the sun in Leo, one from uh, Neptune and one from Pluto. Neptune and Pluto were transpersonal planets. Leo is the pinnacle of ego. We're being asked, and this is not really your issue, because well, fortunately or unfortunately, Pisces doesn't really have an ego. And that can be good in some cases and bad in others, right? Um, so this is an energy about uh, how, how do you help uh, the collective? And it's in your, the, the sun in your sixth house says you can't be good, you, you can't be of use to anybody else if you're not healthy. <laughs> so you gotta stay healthy. All right. We on the 22nd, uh on the 22nd, we have an opposition between Mars and Neptune. This is your first and seventh house. Um this is about um now of course as a Pisces, Neptune's in Pisces, it's been there since what 2011, I think it moved in. Um, so it's been there a long time. It's your ruling planet. So it actually, what it does for Pisces is it, it, it in a way makes Pisces more Pisces, but it brings the energy of the collective in, in, into your, so your, so your physicality is affected by the collective energy even more than it normally is. And so you, in a way, become the canaries in a coal mine when it comes to uh, sensitivity. And, uh, you know, I was a chiropractor for over 30 years and uh, an astrologer for about the same amount of time. So I would look at people's charts and Pisces always had, um, Pisces would generally have issues with uh, sensitivities, environmental sensitivities. Um, and also migraines, a lot of migraineous stuff. So, uh, and migraines, according to Elizabeth Hay, is um, is not allowing uh, you, not allowing you to be yourself. It's like an abdication of self, and so um, you can do whatever you want with that Pisces. But that's been my experience with Pisces. So uh, it's you can't self abdicate. <laughs> Okay, Mars is in your house of relationship. You might have somebody who loves you, you know, needling you to go see the doctor, needling, needling you to stop drinking so much wine, or whatever. Uh, it's done in the in the best in the best possible for the best possible reasons. Okay, um, 
we also, uh, and then on the 23rd, the, the sun moves into Virgo. So the sun is moving into your house of relationship. And so that will be primary, uh, the primary focus. However, Mercury, which is in Virgo and has sort of been sitting there all month so far, uh, goes retrograde. So there can be some miscommunications around your relationships and um, the seventh house also contracts. So if you have to sign a contract, you wanna make sure that you double and triple check everything. You can't take anything. Don't don't go don't go by faith here. You have to uh, you have to you know make sure that your your uh, that the eyes and dots are cross T's and and all that stuff. Which Pisces hates, and I know because my moon's in Pisces. Details, details, details. On the twenty fourth of um, on the 24th of August, we have Mars make a trine to Pluto. This is happening in your seventh and 11th house. Those air houses getting activated. This is creative self-expression. Uh, this is very, very powerful energy um, moving through those houses. So make sure you keep your mind focused on what you wanna bring into your life at that time. And the last week Mars moves into Libra. That is your eighth house of shared resources. Um, also a good time to um, just make sure that everything in your the resources shared with others is on the up and up. Uh, and of course, um, we have the full moon uh, ending the month in your sign with the moon in your first house and the sun in your seventh house. And so this is a very emotional time. It's a very sensitive time. So we end the month with, uh, with high sensitivity, high sensitivity warning um, for Pisces. All right, let's see what animal oracle Pisces is going to uh, need. This is the deck, spirit animal oracle by Colette. Colette. Uh, I love this deck. Let's see what kind of animal comes up for you. Oops. It's pretty hot today, so the cards are a little sticky. Little sticky. It's pretty hot today. It's the summer. It's hot everywhere. It's in the hottest summer in recorded history. We've been pretty lucky though where we are. Uh, it hasn't, it's been hot, <laughs> don't get me wrong. Hotter than usual even, but nothing compared to some places on the planet. God help us, God help us. Oh. Everybody's suffering. Doesn't matter where you live. Doesn't matter who you vote for. <laughs> Doesn't matter your religion. Doesn't matter your education. Elephant spirit, learn from the past. The second time elephant spirit has come up. And let's read it. And, you know, if you have in the past given your power away and it hasn't worked out for you, if in your, in your past you haven't paid attention to what was important to pay attention to when you put it in somebody else's hands. Elephant spirit. Although we often wish we could leave the past behind, Elephant Spirit reminds us that memory matters. We must respect the wisdom of the elders who hand down to us traditions they have shaped to express our connection to each other and respect for the community. This is very much um, an energy of the South Node in Libra, the South Node in Libra. Uh, 
what has come before informs what we are experiencing today. And we must never forget our legacy of strength and dignity. Elephant Spirit appears with the message that we are to acknowledge that which came before and to learn from it. All of us are memory-based creatures and we must revisit the past to understand where we are and where we are going. The stories of events you experience, the stories in our collective memory and the stories of relationships you have had uh, can be told in many ways. What story will you tell? Elephant Spirit is here to encourage you to make it one that stirs your sense of power and dignity. For you have honored yourself by choosing to learn from your past. Spirit rejoices at your willingness to learn and grow. Cool, all right. Now let's see what the Tarot of Transformation, where did I put that? Oh dear. Where did I put my cards? I mean, they can't be far. So strange, so very Pisces. All right, I'll be right back. I'll have to find those cards. They were right next to me. Ha! But they were hiding behind the curtain. Just a very, very Pisces way. Where are they? They should be right here. Looking, looking. They were right there. They were behind this curtain. So, <laughs> just in this way, a very Pisces curtain, which we would expect in a room where somebody with a Pisces moon likes to spend their time. All right. Oh, let me just give this a good shuffle. I've had these these parts for years, years and years. I got them at one of my favorite bookstores that's unfortunately no longer there. It was in Mashpee, for any of you who might be from the Cape. Is it called Cape Cod Books, I think? A lovely, lovely woman used to run that place. I went there for at least 20 years, but I've been here for 30, so, <laughs> or more now. So, yeah, I don't think she's, she may not be on the planet anymore. She had the best books, man. And it was also a used bookstore. I love used bookstores. She had new stuff, but it was mostly used stuff. And uh, it's like you get, you find what is looking for you in a used bookstore, as opposed to a bookstore where you go and you look for something. The books find you in used bookstores. We have Exploring the Inner Landscape, Teacher of Cups. Look at that, so Pisces. We even have a, a mermaid in there. Look at that, just like this little mermaid with her spanglies. This is like a Leo mermaid, right? This is like Pisces with Leo ascendant right there. Um, teacher of cups. So you are, as always, introspective, <laughs> thinking big thoughts, imagining, hopefully big things, good things, not bad things, because imagination is a wonderful thing, but it can also be a terrible thing if misused. Your challenge is the lover's card. So you're making a decision around love. And there is a lot of energy for the houses associated with our relationships. The air houses uh, are, the third house is our relationship to our siblings, our, our seventh house is our relationship to our partners, our 11th house is our relationship to our friends. So you're really sort of, mulling over uh, how you feel inside about all these different relationships, what's underneath it all. We have the six of discs or called the web of life. You're, you're pondering how everything is connected, how everything 
you know, you pull one string, it vibrates on another string. Um, and so you really sort of in this place of reviewing your life and where it's, your life has taken you and perhaps where your next step may lie. In the past, we have the High Priestess, one of my favorite cards in this deck. This is lifting the veil, lifting the veil and seeing the truth. You've seen the truth recently in the past. You've seen the truth. The veil has been lifted. The veil, you know, when Jesus put the, th the, the mud in the eyes of the blind person and the scales fell from their eyes. This is what this is talking about. It's about seeing with the inner eye. Seeing with the inner eye. I love this card. This is, the, I actually made a plate. I, I copied this picture on a plate and made a plate. I don't know if we still have that plate. It was one of those. One of those art things where you 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 paint a plate and then you have the plate, but I don't know if that plate is still around or if it broke. Well, that's terrible. I, I'll have to ask Michael. Michael may remember where the plate is. In the sky, we have the two of discs balancing, um, balancing the material life. So you are you are doing this. You're figuring out how you can maintain your lifestyle. If that's what you want to do, maybe you're deciding whether you can maintain your lifestyle. Maybe it's too much um, for you to handle and you want to live a more simplified uh, existence. So this is what this is sort of what you're sort of you're kind of in this place where you're like, well, this is everything that's happened now. Now, how do I how do I move forward in a more balanced way, perhaps? Let's see what's in the immediate future. Authentic nourishment, the three of wands. This is a beautiful, this is about coming from your heart. This is about doing what you love and loving what you do. This is connecting to the core of your being and allowing it to spiral out into the world and shine your light. This is a beautiful, beautiful card. Uh, it's the birth of light, really, the, the three of wands. I love the three of wands, one of my favorite cards how people see you server of cups they see you as somebody who helps other people ease their pain you're seen as the healer the friends um whether you know the person or not you're going to always give that energy of of compassion to others and people recognize that in you in your domestic situation taking the hierophant off the, the pedestal this is about this is about coming to a real appreciation of your wisdom, not the wisdom of what the government says or the wisdom of what the Pope says or the wisdom of what somebody in high authority says, because the Hierophant is about that. But the Hierophant is also about listening to the inner voice. And the inner voice doesn't have to look like the Pope. The inner voice doesn't have to look like the president. The inner voice is your inner voice. It's the voice that comes from your heart and soul. And, and that is what you're connecting with at this time. Um, hopes and fears, we have the devil. The devil is anything that keeps you from your light and it can be addiction. So if you have a propensity, which is often seen in, in Pisces, honestly, because the world is difficult, and Pisces is sensitive and gentle. And sometimes Pisces will take to addiction to, e to, to ease the sharp edges of the world. They prefer to sort of be in that sort of in-between place where there's everything is full of possibility, but things can't necessarily hurt you, but they can because at some point you have to walk the earth, right? Um, and the outcome, wonderful card, this, the chariot, you are on your way, you're on the direction of your destiny, uh, you are, that's it, you're, you're good, you're good, all of this introspection, all of that is, is well and wonderful, but you know the truth, and you're going to act on the truth, let's see what's underneath it all, we have the master of cups, abiding in love, the seven of discs, is incubation, is a waiting time, and the teacher of 
wands, spirit and matter. You are about to burst onto the scene. Almost, almost there, almost there, almost ready. By the end of the month, you will be moving forward at a very rapid rate. And uh, and uh, I think it's gonna be very good, Pisces. Very good. You're taking the past into consideration. You're learning from the past. You're respecting the wisdom of teachers and from and the wisdom of the past uh, and moving forward into the future with a full heart. I like that. What a lovely, what a lovely read. I'm so excited. I have a Pisces moon, so. And I I try to be as, um, you know, what do you call as possible? As, hey, I'm gonna keep myself separate from this, but it's hard sometimes, especially with the water. All right, guys, have yourself a great month. Like and subscribe if you would. Uh, if you'd like a reading with me, there's a link below uh, to my website. I do hour and hour and a half readings. Uh, if it's your first one, I prefer the hour and a half. This is a lot of information. It's a combination of astrology, numerology, and the tree of life, the Kabbalah. And uh, it changed my life. So uh, it'll probably change yours as well. Um, or you can become a patron if you like my work. I'm going to, uh, I just put two, uh, recently I put out a video on uh, Clarence Thomas and Alito. I want to do all of the, um, um the supreme court justices um it's a series i'm i'm working on so um i'll try to get another one out this week i have in the in the queue or in the uh, up at bat or ready to get up at bat is uh john roberts so uh, i just i have to just do a little bit more research on him uh on him because i don't know as much about him as i did about thomas and and Lido, so I like to get my research done. Um, but uh, yeah, so you can you can uh, help me help me get more work out there and more understanding. I think the more we understand each other, the better off we'll be. And uh, when you have somebody out in the outer world, that's a, a focus of everybody's attention. There's a lesson in it, and I think we need to uh, learn a lesson. Um, and so that's why I do people like that. Um, yeah, so that's what's going on. All right, well, I'll let you go. Get on with your day uh, and take care. Have a wonderful month. Looks like a good month for you, Pisces. I'm happy to say. All right, take care, everyone. Namaste. Much love.